Hey guys, Gassy TV here with a bit of a recap with my important pointers, a 3.25 Volt League. Do me a favor, by the way, after watching this video, if you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe for more content because it really supports the stream and the channel here on YouTube. So thank you so much for your support. Let's crack into it. Starting off with the idea of the actual league mechanic, I was super excited about the actual reveal of this. This was so freaking cool. The league mechanic itself, is going to allow us to essentially build up a settlement inside the actual world of Ray class. And I think this is so cool to experience. So you're basically progressing by getting gold in game, which they've enabled to be a currency drop in the game and allowing us to be actually building up these houses or town in this town, if you will, and just establishing the settlement. During the playthrough of doing maps and whatnot, as you can see here in this footage here, we're actually going to be able to have our workers mine these different types of nodes for currencies or resources rather that you later will be able to spend to upgrade things or adding new type of buildings inside your settlement. In this case, the character showing you building an actual bridge into an arbor where you can build a boat, which you can send out to sell these type of resources to different uh, mechanics or different types of vendors, if you will. They can even farm, have like a farmland and assign workers to this. It's a bit hard to explain in a shorter word, so I don't want to prolong this video too much. But basically, you're playing Settlers of Catan. And on top of this, these different buildings that you're building up in your settlement will allow you to gain access to certain really cool mechanics. Anything ranging from in this little window here, you'll see the recombinators. You're able to actually have access to an auction house for currency. Yes, an auction house for currency. It's actually happening. It's so cool. It's so crazy. I didn't think we we're going to see this till after PoE 2 launch, but here it is. A little trial run with it. We'll have access to some of the Lake of Calandra mirror versions of twisting the jewelries, like rings and amulets. We're going to have access to recombinators. There's a gold sink access for us to basically try out the idea of gambling for vendors or base items and whatnot. There's so much content in here. I'm just going to leave a link in the descriptions below to the actual announcement post. In this video, I'll be tackling a bit of a TLDR of things that stood out the most for me when it comes to the actual patch notes themselves. But before doing that, I did want to point out this little mechanic here or two things about it. One of the buildings that you can build up, as you can see here on the screen, is actually map devices in which you can have the hired workers, which you do with the gold that you drop from just clearing maps and playing the game, that actually are map runners. In this device, you're able to literally slot in maps that your runners or your workers, in this case, in the settlement, will run for you. And these will all be done with sort of like a mobile game introduction where there's a timer. I don't know the exact timers of this, but for the sake of the argument, let's say that you have a map and your characters or your workers or map runners, whatever you want to call them, will take five minutes to run a map. So you can smack in a bunch of maps in a little list and you go and play the game as you want to. And every now and then you can have a little notification popping up saying, hey, your runners are now finished in map. And then you can go to your settlement and collect the rewards that these runners have done from or picked up and looted for you from this run. I love that approach because the only times I've ever played mobile games have been games where you're essentially having, you know, building a building that takes two hours to finish or 20 minutes to finish. And, you know, I play those games, so, you know, when I did play mobile games, which was quite some time ago, but I really enjoyed doing that. And now we're going to have this as a little side game in PUE, and then you send out your, your resources to sell them with the boats. I think this is such a cool way to have this in the game. And I'm going to be honest, I am so excited about this that I would already want this to be a core game mechanic, and I haven't even tried it. So there's a bunch of things like respecting with gold and trying out the gold auction house for currencies. You can see here, this is the currency exchange market. This is entirely player handled. You can put up things for sale. You can buy things for players in directly. This is only there for stackable currency orbs, not for items. I think this is going to be absolutely amazing. And I just don't know how else to describe it. Do check out the link in the description below. Let's dive in to the actual TLDR of the biggest notes that I have for the minion related stuffs and all the patch notes that I went through. So the patch notes we went through are humongous, like absolutely nutty. 
and it's just crazy to see. So I picked out after many, many, many hours of going through this. I, I don't know how many. I think we spent eight hours on crazy shit in this. So I'm going to go through some of the things that stood out the most for me. So let's just tackle the minions, get them out of the way first. First off, I've been asked so many times over. I'm just going to take it right off the bat here. Bama builds are not nerfed. Prismatic clones did get affected. But the way Bama did their main source of damage output comes from Blink Arrow of Bombardment which was not touched at all in the uh, patch notes. There's a few other changes, we'll get to them. But minions in general, Bama was more or less untouched on the, on the bombardment part, so don't worry about the prismatic clone thingy too much. It wasn't actually impacting. Obviously, when it comes to Bama builds, we'll see what Previ has in store for us when he updates the guides. Besides that, we are getting what I had a video, I think it was uh, seven months ago, was talking about the best specters in the entire game that has ever been introduced to Path of Exile for us. They're coming back. Affliction specters are coming back, but they said that they have been appropriately designed to be less from less as strong, not as strong as they were on their debut back in Affliction League launch. What that means, we have no idea. I've asked Mark for some clarification on this. I'm just waiting for a response to see when we're going to get the information of the actual nerfed state of these guys. But the specters I'm talking about is like the naval officers, the uh, the turtle, for example. We have the uh, tiger for the haste auras. We have hydra specters, hulking monstrosities, and then, you know, so forth and so forth. It's such crazy specters, especially when referring to the bomb again for the lightning ones. For example, I think it was Spirit Fortuna or something, the totem that gives this insane Wrath Aura. Even if they come in with a very, very bad nerfed state, those buffs that these Spectres provide are incredibly strong. So very excited to see what the state of that will be. But that's the minions. So I have, a, again, I have a long list of things. I'm going to tick out a couple of uh, things that stood out the most for me. So let's talk about some buffs and nerfs. Some nerfs... Um, Came in a massive patch notes list, but the majority of it was buffing extremely underperforming, well, melee builds. Essentially, a lot of people were talking about it in the Twitch chat saying, Yo, Gassy, it's crazy. Holy Relic wasn't touched. Oh my god, Suman's is going to be meta again. Bama's going to be top performing again. Poisonous Res wasn't nerfed. What the hell? And people are like complaining about this. And my reaction is so, I don't know what to say. The entire community has been asking for years for them to not nerf the top end and instead take the shitty builds called melee, sorry, the bad builds, and bring them up to the performance of the good builds. Now they're actually doing that, and people have the audacity to complain. Come on! Just be happy, okay? Be happy. Melee builds deser has deserved attention for so long in this game. They've been underperforming, complete disastrous position so the changes they've done has been a generic change to added damage effectiveness on spells during the leveling stage between the gem level 1 to 20 it's been slightly lowered very 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 minimal and then they brought up the scaling of melee skills tremendously across the board and i'm very confident there's going to be a lot of tweaking being required after this but instead of just trying to hit the spot on a couple of abilities, they've basically taken the entire package and been like, yo, let's just lift this shit up and see where it lands. So it's going to be very fun to see how well melee builds will perform moving forward with these changes. Outside of that, there's been some notable nerfs, obviously. I'm going to pick out some of the ones that stood out the most for me. A lot of mini builds and a lot of other builds actually uses a thing called uh, recovery on a life when you block. It's been a very high-performing, reliable way to sustain your HP. This suffix modifier will no longer be able to roll. No mention on the ES version of it, though, but the life one is gone, which means that the unique shield, the surrender, might be something that we'll be prioritizing moving forward or having other sources of defensive layers. So, for example, the Guardian is using something called the uh, Time of Need Ascendancy Node. That Ascendancy Node will give you HP every four seconds. In between that, you'll have life loss. The Necromancer obviously has the approach of um, the leeching of your minions to yourself through Bone Barrier Node. Something else that's been nerfed is obviously the approach of physical damage taken uh, has been moved from tons of items uh, and just been removed. Physical damage taken as, such as physical damage taken as fire, lightning, or cold. These have been quite drastically limited. And they've also added a 
and Eldritch modifiers to compensate for this that allows you to have physical damage taken as. For example, physical damage taken as fire or even chaos, which is now usable on rare items rather than forced into uniques. They've also dropped this off on Watcher Size, so this will obviously have a heavy impact on defensive scalings. Something else that was nerfed was Detonate Dead. They were indirectly destroyed by making it so that Spectres are no longer being detonatable when you have them on your Desecrate pool. They're separating Desecrate corpses generated, so the ones that come from your Spectre pool will have a different type of approach to it and cannot be used with anything but minion skills, uh, and the Detonate Dead will not work on these corpses. And they also lowered the le max corpse scaling level to 80 at the highest level for both Unearthed and Desecrate corpses, further emphasizing on the nerf to Detonate Dead itself and the higher end, itself and the higher end of performance. Besides the nerfs, there's also going to be some notable buffs I noticed. For example, like I mentioned earlier, all melee skills are basically just a buff to the skies. Newer, higher item bases is there to compensate one of the smaller nerfs to both grace and determination, which is completely compensated by us having access to a better bases, like energy shield bases, evasion bases, armor bases. We'll give so much more of these stats to compensate for the, for the drop on the race and determination. They're also making it so that the quality that you put on these items will no longer be an additive scaling. So if you have 20% quality on an item, it is now multiplicatively scaling your armor, energy shield, or evasion. So we can look at body armors, for example, regardless of different versions of the new types, will hit well over a thousand energy shields. It's gonna be pretty crazy to see how much life and energy shield, evasion, armor you can get, because they also increases the max life you can get in these items. And obviously the essence of greed is following along with appropriate values. This also giga buff the base melee weapons and as well wands in terms of the quality for the damage that they get. But they also decided to scale up the base crit strike chance of these weapons and items or wands. And they also upped the, the attack speed on wands significantly, which is pretty cool to see to give a little bit of love to those wander builds. So one thing in particular, if I'm going to reference minions, because, you know, it's me, hello. Uh, Mata's teaching a unique scepter will also be getting 1% higher base crit, which is actually absolutely insane moving forward. Uh, other things that's added is actually the return of tinctures becoming a core drop where you can replace one of your flasks and have a tincture, and that's going to give you a buff to your attacks, for example. And then they've reworked the entirety of the Raider Ascendancy by literally deleting it. Just yeet, all the way gone. And instead, the new version is called the Warden. Or the Warden Ascendancy. The Warden Ascendancy is a complete work of the Raider. And basically turned it into a build that is focusing on scaling tinctures to a higher level. And they're actually really cool. They have a mana burn effect, so you can't keep them on forever. And once you, they, once you either run out of mana or disable a tincture, you'll have to wait X seconds, I believe the timer from the footage, but eight seconds before we can re-enable another one. I think it's just a cool way to play it and uh, focusing on the Raider because it kind of lost its identity with the way the game works lately. So I'm very excited to see how tinctures will fit in this world of the Raid class right now. Uh, they obviously made a complete rework on other melee stuffs as well, such as the Gladiator Ascendancy, with a big rehaul making it significantly more attractive to play. But again, I don't want to take too much time. I know this video is going to be pretty long either way. So again, I'll leave a link in the descriptions below for you to check all the details. And I'm going to move on to a very specific topic that I'll be making a, a bit of a separate video on, I believe, to be fair, because it's called the Dancing Dervish. The TLDR on the Dancing Dervish issue is that with the way it was worded in the patch notes, we are able to essentially have a free, well, two free seven link Dancing Dervish minions for every minion build in the entire game. I'm going to go through this in detail because it's a bit of a discussion topic. I'll cover that in a future video, probably today or tomorrow that I'll be launching that one. So do stay tuned for that one. There's a bit of issues with this. I made a tweet about this. For those of you that watched the stream, you know what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll cover that in detail because it's a big one. We have another problem when it comes to nerfs, and that is the fact that they have removed Divine Blessing. This obviously impacts builds that uses Eldritch Battery. This is mostly affecting builds such as uh, Poison SRS, for example, Poison Holy Relic, and builds uh, like Poison Enemy Weapon as well. 
a lot of poison and obviously tons of non-minion builds as well but you know honestly who gives a fuck about those the removal of divine blessing definitely has a big impact on how we approach uh, gearing and how we approach the, 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 these type of builds but we have the perk of being you know minion lovers what can i say so what we're going to do is we're going to enable running guardian's blessing and the solution to this has mostly to do with playing necromancer so it's going to be a bit of a more favor towards playing necromancer because the ascendancy node bone barrier gives your minions 40 percent of their max life as energy shield which allows you to actually utilize mask of the stitched demon unique helmet and that combined with running the guardian's blessing on an aura for him he will still be close to immortal and regenerate tons more hp can be a bit expensive we're talking between 50 to 100 chaos if it's cheap one or two divines if it's expensive so i think we're going to look at a more a medium budget approach to re-enable this um, which the divine blessing were able to do in a much cheaper way of course we'll see how the pub actions will be taking place in the coming week leading into the launch speaking of which obviously all of my build guides will be updated before the league launches a link to my build guides will also be available in the descriptions below so do check that out another thing that's happening is banners are no longer an aura they don't have any reservation or now usable skills however the patch notes did not shine a good light on the banner skills i found myself really disliking the way they made the banners they don't feel that attractive not even for melee builds except for the war banner which seems to be something we could utilize for things like dominating glow but outside of that, I wasn't very happy with the banners, but they are now an unused ability with no passive effect whatsoever, no reservation. They will have their effect when you place the banner, which seems to me that it's more like, hey, I'm encountering a breach hand, let's pop a banner. Oh, I'm encountering a hard boss or something, I'll pop a banner. Outside of that, they don't feel like they're being used that much. But with the removal of all melee totems, Melee builds will have two different options in general outside of the generic utility options we know of and that would be to run banners and or the new retaliate abilities to compensate their uh, their well to basically add to the powers of their toolkits now that the actual melee totems are completely removed. So I'm very excited to see the guide creators and the content creators throughout the game actually come up with the cool things for melee for once. We haven't seen a love for them in a very 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 long time. Quality changes, like I mentioned before, is obviously getting into a multiplicative state. But something else that's changed with quality is that it's going to be much harder to achieve a 30% quality item as a result of this to not get let that get out of hand. So the perfect fossil has been changed to an opulent fossil and no longer gives quality. Instead, it gives some other modifiers, such as being able to draw, craft drop-only modifiers like Alba or Galv, it seems, and also have the modifier... Uh, value on the crafting process on fossil of not rolling no tags uh, such as spell suppression by the way but attribute requirements stuff like that won't be able to roll if you use that fossil uh, but another more important thing when it comes to crafting that i like to do is corrupting equipment to guarantee 30 percent quality of an item but making the item corrupted to then use tainted teardrops to craft it will no longer be possible they are changing that craft entirely as a result of this so that kind of sums up like the, the list of things that stood out the most for me when it comes to the patch notes. There's a 30,000 word long patch note linked in the descriptions below. If you want to spend the next eight hours reading that, go for it. I know this video is a little bit longer than I expected it to be. Hope you guys enjoyed my little notes on this of the TLDR with things that stood out for me the most. We have plenty of content coming out for you guys on this channel. So do let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the actual 3.25 Boat League. Until next time, as always, stay safe, keep rocking.